In this first tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the basic tools and features available within Endorphin. We'll create a simple animation using a force and a behavior event. Now I'm going to be using various keyboard shortcuts throughout this tutorial, and I have my keyboard layout set to the default standard Endorphin layout, but you can change the keyboard layout by going to the Options menu and selecting Keyboard. And from the Keyboard Options dialog you can select, as I have, the Endorphin standard layout, or you can define the function of each hotkey or hotkey sequence individually, or you can select one of three layouts which may be more familiar to you from other packages. There's 3D Studio Max, Maya, and XSI. So let's begin by making sure we have a clean new Endorphin scene and we can do that by going to the File menu and selecting New Scene. The Endorphin scene is a container for all of your Endorphin simulation and animation elements. All of your characters, props and all your environmental objects live within this container called a scene. Now there are various ways you can create animation within Endorphin, but they really fall into two basic categories. The first is to import animation from an external data source, and the second is to simulate within Endorphin using the various tools available to you. But the real power, of course, comes from combining the two, so that you can take an original imported animation, use many of the different tools available from within Endorphin to create a simulation, and from that original base animation you can end up with a huge variety of different results. So let's begin by saving the scene. We can do this by going to the File menu and selecting either Save Scene or Save Scene As. And navigate to the location where you want to save the scene. I'm going to call our scene Stagger. And you'll notice the .ens file extension. That's the Endorphin scene file extension. But should you be using the Learning Edition, you may notice that this scene file extension differs. I'm going to save that scene out as Stagger and you can see now the name Stagger for the scene file is displayed in the top left of the screen. With every new Endorphin scene you create, you're supplied with a default character and this is him here in the viewport. He's also represented on the timeline by the name Character01 and this character has a series of three tracks at the moment associated with him. You can add to these tracks or delete these tracks and we'll come to exactly what we do with these tracks in a little while. Also down here in the timeline you've got the environment. The environment track represents everything else in the endorphin scene other than your characters. This could include objects with which your character interacts. It could include buildings, for example, and anything else in the endorphin scene other than your characters. But you can also have more than one character down here. You can have any number of characters, in fact, within an endorphin scene. So now let's move down to the bottom right of the screen. We have a number of transport buttons, and the most important of these for us for the moment is this one in the middle. This is the simulate button. So if you click that now and watch what happens in the viewport, the character simply flops to the ground like a rag doll under the influence of gravity. And you'll see down here in the timeline that you have a series of greyed out frames which rep represent the animation we've just created. And you can scrub through the animation you've just created using the time slider. Or returning to the transport buttons, you can play through that animation in a forward direction or in a reverse direction. Notice that with the play buttons and the simulate button, when you click them, they turn to a stop button, which allows you to stop whichever action you've just performed. You can also step through that animation in a reverse direction and in a forward direction, go to the end or to the beginning of the animation. And using this button on the far left, clear frames, you can remove all of the animation you've created so far. So as we've seen, if we simulate, the character simply flops to the ground under the influence of gravity. And what we're going to do is give him a little push, just to change the animation a little. So if we return to frame 0 on the timeline, select the character by left-clicking on his name in the timeline, then we can go to the Character menu and select Create Force Event. And as you can see, a small orange triangle has been placed in one of the tracks for our character 01. Animations in Endorphin are created using events, and events are placed on these tracks I mentioned earlier. These are event tracks. We've just created a force event. Its orange colour simply tells us that it's been selected in the timeline, and if we look in the viewport, you can see this orange arrow also indicating that the force event is currently selected. You'll also notice that the character's torso is coloured red. This is telling us that this is currently the target for the force event we've just created. This is the body part to which the force is going to be applied. 
in the top left of the viewport the word selecting is telling us that we're in selection mode and required to select some object as the target for this force event and again by default the torso of this character is the target for the current force event but we can select any other body part or set of body parts by box selecting by control left clicking to add to that selection set or to remove any object from it and in this case we want to select the head so if we left click on the head and you can see that the force arrow moves up to point to the center of the head and the head object turns red now every event in endorphin has a set of properties associated with it if we move now over to the right hand side of the screen we can see the property view for the force event we've created and there it tells us we're looking at the property view for the force event and there are various properties that we have access to in here but also if we return to the viewport for a second and left click somewhere in the viewport you can see that we leave selection mode now if we want to re-enter selection mode we simply select the event move over to its property view under target objects click on the word select and that puts us back into selection mode we can select any other body part we want make sure before you move on though that you have got the head selected over here we also have access to some other properties in this property view the elevation and rotation for example allow us to change the direction in which this force is applied I can type a value in there explicitly or I can use the scroll arrows on the right hand side to change that value or I can select the force arrow in the viewport and use the rotate tool from the main toolbar this displays a series of handles which allow me to rotate around the x-axis using the red handle the y-axis using the green and around the z using the blue this light blue handle allows me to rotate the force arrow around the plane in which the viewport is currently set and if I click in the middle of all the axis this grey sphere allows me to rotate freely about all three axes so before we move on let's just return to the property view for the force event and ensure by typing 90 into the elevation field and minus 90 